I'm the host of Wild WOW Podcast. My name is Darshan McAway. If you typically listen to this podcast on audio-only platforms, well, rest assured, there's a link in the description that takes you to the video format of this podcast interview. Now, let's get on with our special guest. Let's get right into it. Listen, a lot of times what gives me the accreditation, if you will, and the Hello, I'm the host of Wild WOW Podcast. My name is Darshan. And it's going down like this. Big Red helps me around the house. My dream car happens to be a 13 Tundra. What's your Anything else you got to say? Any words of maybe encouragement or words of hope? <laughs> Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Darshan McRae. Thank you so much for tuning in to wowpodcast.me. That's W-O-W-P-O-D-C-A-S-T dot M-E. And today we have a special guest. She's coming back to visit us again. Yeah. Diane Bater, how you doing? I'm good, Darshan. How are you today? <laughs> I'm doing well. Fantastic to see you again. Yeah, uh, so, we're, so we're going to be talking about all that sparkles and a, a few other of your books. Yeah. So let's get let's get into it. All that sparkles is is now out. And so tell me, how's it been going for you? Um, It's been going really well. Uh, back in January, I had left my publisher after 10 years. So all that sparkles is the first relaunch uh, from my Glitter Bay Mysteries. And I'm going to hold it up in front of my co-author here. <laughs> and I was uh, playing around with book covers because I kind of have fun doing the whole art and craft thing too. Mm -hmm. And I came up with that cover and I absolutely love it and re-edited the whole book. Everything is just much, I'm much happier with it than I was in originally. Right. And so is he. So, so what, what is all that sparkles? What is it about? Hey, the book is about um, two sisters, Lakin and Sage Miller. Sage owns a small vintage boutique called Vintage Sage. And her sister, Lakin, was a former supermodel who became ill and moved in with her sister to recover. Between the two of them, they get into all kinds of trouble and uh, begin to solve mysteries on the side. So it's um, definitely a fun series, and I'm really looking forward to getting it all back out. Yeah, I mean, you're having a good time writing books and, you know, enjoying in life. Uh, I looked through your, your book gallery, and one book in particular that stood out to me is uh, A Hysteria of Killer. I want to know what that is about. Amazing enough, I do have a print copy. Okay, um, okay. Last summer when I moved back to Alberta from Ontario, I'm in Canada, and I got involved with a small publisher called Aconite Cafe, and through them, I've been writing a series of short stories. Hysteria of Killers is one of their books that I wrote a short story for um, called The Cat Lady's Secret. And the whole series has been so much fun and has given me a whole new character to work with. And <laughs> I've been having an absolute blast. So the next one will be coming out. Yeah, Hobby and Foul Play. I just saw that on your screen. That one will be coming out in August. Okay. And I have had an absolute blast. And I've taken up a whole new hobby, which is those miniatures that I have there. Um, those ones I did not build, but I do have a couple of things that you'll be able to check out on Pinterest and, and on my website eventually. So oh, let's let's talk about the miniatures. Uh, what what got you into it? Good question. <laughs> I can't even remember where that all came from. Um, I was kind of, you know, you get bored, you start kind of browsing online and you end up doing shopping stuff that you, you don't need stuff, but it kind of looks cool. Yeah. And I ended up going, my daughter and I actually went to a, um, a garage sale and they had this little, um, it was a CD rack, but it looked like a little bookcase. Mm -hmm. And I've been slowly turning this thing into a little bookstore. So that'll be, I'll start putting that up on Pinterest as well, because it's just probably about halfway built. But it's just been kind of fun just playing around and doing the whole project brought up this story about my new character, Dash Allman, who solves a mystery involving miniature dollhouses. 
Interesting. That sounds like it's going to be an interesting read. Oh, she's become my absolute favorite character, and I love working on these next books. Right. Actually, all of not all of her stories. Um, seven of the short stories involving her will be coming out in a collection for Christmas. So that'll be up there soon too. Now, are any of these books uh, in the audio version format? Not yet. As I okay. said, I just started redoing a bunch of them. I've got two more plus my Dash collection that I'm putting out this year alone. So right now, um, audio is kind of on the back burner, but that will be coming soon too. Got you. Got you. All right. So let's talk about Let's go back to that miniature thing again. You know, usually when I see those miniature things, right, it, it reminds me of the ship in the bottle. <laughs> Do you know how to get the ship inside the bottle? I like, I never researched it or anything, but how do they get the ship? I actually read something. They build the ship and the masts actually fold down. And when they put the ship in the bottle, they have a string and they can pull the string, oh. bring up the sails, and then just detach the string. That makes sense. That makes sense. I, I thought that was crazy when I saw that. Always wanted one, never got one. I'm pretty <laughs> sure I'm going I'm to look into it now because I just well, fascinated. Well, I how to build one. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. So any movies on the plate for these books? I'm really into movies. movies. Oh, my gosh. Um, my kids keep saying, yes, they better be. But I, like I said, this has only all been since January. So mm -hmm. I'm slowly kind of branching out like the... Uh, Audiobooks hopefully will be coming in the next couple of years, and a movie would be fantastic. If anybody knows somebody, I'm in. Right. I know that's right. <laughs> uh, any book clubs, any book readings as of lately? Um, this one just came out, so not just yet. Um, my first one just came out in March, so I'm still uh, putting everything out there. Uh, okay. Same thing. Anybody's interested, just pop to my website. Are you going to do any type of a, like social media rollout as or as much as you can? Um, I'm kind of in the middle of that right now. Um, mm -hmm. All that sparkles just kind of came out as more of a soft launch, but I have a couple of media campaigns coming up very shortly. Mm -hmm. This is kind of one of the first that I've actually spoken about it because it just came out a couple of weeks ago. I just got my copies. Yay. Right. Um, and I am doing, um, in Calgary, we have a big conference called When Words Collide, and I'm actually doing a bunch of stuff with them, as well as my books will be on sale with um, Owl's Nest Books at the uh, at the conference. So that'll be a lot of fun, too. Okay. So all this is all brand new. <laughs> right, right. It seems like it's going to be a, a, a nice heavy load on your plate. So aside from the miniatures, aside from writing the books, how yep. has life been going for you since the last interview up until now? You know what things have, I mean, it's always a bit of a roller coaster, but on a whole, things are really good. Okay. Um, we nearly lost my mom earlier this year, but she has bounced back and she is uh, stronger than ever. So, so we're all very happy about that. And uh, she has actually put up a whole little library in her apartment of all of my books, which is very cool. That right. just made my day. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So, so you live off the countryside of Canada? Um, I am kind of in a in the downtown of a small city. Okay. And but I look out the window and I can see trees and birds and there's just a duck swimming by on the creek. So it's that's my my favorite part of my office is I get to look out at the birds every day. Right. Because I was going to ask you when you're writing these books just based off of how the covers look it seems as if like you get a chance to you know take a glance out into the world and you know and and gain some inspiration you know absolutely and part of it like last summer when i first moved here i wasn't working and i was i think having a bit of a struggle not so much with the writing part that was going great but personally um because i wasn't in contact with a lot of people i was just kind of at home all the time and um, I actually got the, a job where I'm working retail, which some days you just want to yank all your hair out. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you come into contact with a lot of people. And oh, boy, the ideas I come home with. I have little notebooks 
everywhere that I come home with little scraps of paper in my pocket going, oh my gosh, I got to put this in a book. So there's lots of great ones coming out. <laughs> right. You know, here's something I find very fascinating. And it, it, this wasn't like this years ago, not necessarily. Uh, it comes down to people who are writers and influencers. A lot of people are talking about their regular jobs now. Like some people will be streaming from their job. But back in the day, I want to say early, late 80s, early 90s, it was almost an embarrassment to uh, to be writing and not have that book take care of your life, you know? Yeah. So I, I find that pretty fascinating that, you know, some of us still have jobs, but we're still trying to pursue like the big seller, you know? Absolutely. And you know what? And like I said, I was home for a few months and I, I missed people. Mm hmm. As much as, you know, working retail, you get to home at the end of the day going, I never want to see another person again. Um, but you need that outside influence as a writer, as an artist, as, you know, any kind of creative. You need that outside influence that just to spur ideas for your books or, you know, even just going out for a walk, something like that. Seeing people in the park, you need other people to help generate ideas. Yeah. I agree, because uh, um, some of the books that I wrote, when I came out with them, I was around people, I was working a job, and you know, you hear these conversations, and I go, you know what? Let me see if I can, you know, get the yep. solution to that, you know, to that question. Yeah, exactly. And you like food, you like to pay the rent, like, yeah. you know, there is right now, especially, there are so many books. It, take a look at Amazon. There's millions of books out there. Mm -hmm. Anybody can pop up a book. Doesn't mean they're good. Doesn't mean they're going to make money, but anybody can put a book out there. Yeah. If you're not seriously going to do the marketing, if you're seriously not going to follow up with it, you're just going to let it sit there. Nobody knows it's there. Yeah. And you know, even those of us that you know, I've written 16 books and not including any of the anthologies and I'm still working. I'm still trying to keep a roof over my head, right. but I love what I do. Yeah. 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 That's, I mean, I'm, I'm there with you. Uh, I stepped out of the working world a little while ago. Um, you know, these, the book sales are, I wish they were a little bit more rapid, you know, instead of 30 day, a 30 day payout. Yeah. Um, and that was part of the reason why I had started my own publishing company so I can get paid every day. Cause I, I couldn't take it. <laughs> no. Right. Like when I was with the publisher, we would be paid every six months. See, so you have no idea how any of your marketing, any of your anything impacts your sales. Yeah. And it's yeah. really hard to tell this way. At least I can do um, a book tour or something like that. Like I'm just getting into a virtual book tour. I was just chatting with the lady before this. And this way I can actually tell if any of this is affecting my sales. I can see that Right. before I had no idea. Yeah, me neither. Me neither. And um, I had a big issue with Amazon. Oh, I had such a big issue with them because I couldn't see any numbers. And then a lot of times you don't, these companies, when they get their software, they can fudge numbers. You yes. know? And I was doing so much marketing, it didn't make any sense. And I was like, how am I sales so low if I did all of this? You know? Yeah, I was having that same issue. So yeah, it's definitely uh, tricky. So yeah. are you going, so you do have your own publishing company too, right? I do. Yes. Right. One of my, right. my daughter's, one of my daughter's friends actually designed my logo for me. So I thought okay. that was pretty cool. Let's talk about that. Uh, just in case somebody wants to, you know, give you a shout and, you know, be up under your umbrella. Yeah, absolutely. I'm currently, I'm just focusing on relaunching all of my own books. Okay. Um, but as I'm doing so, oh my gosh, am I learning a lot. Um, these are books friends of mine have written and, and published on their own. Some are uh, Be Brave, actually, I helped publish okay. because the friend that wrote it um, is not tacky at all. So I did help her with that one. And Her Majesty's Champion hopefully will come out next year. That's one I'm actually writing with a friend of mine. So a couple of the other ones, I just helped to do edits and uh, helped to support my friends. Now, the one that, uh, let me see, is right here, Her Majesty's Champion. You're yeah. writing that with uh, uh, Gary Wilson. Yeah. Just yeah. just fill me in on that process on, like, how much time are you giving him to complete his, his section? 
it, it's a little bit crazy. And mostly because he is not on a computer at all. Okay. So he handwrites everything, sends me his handwritten chapters. <laughs> I type everything in and print it all off. Right now he has the rough draft and he's in Ontario. So this isn't just we can go have coffee and so we're across the country from each other trying to do this. So oh my. it's been a blast. And it is the first time I've ever written anything fantasy. So yeah. he's he's running what the, the book is and everything. I'm just doing the edits and we'll do the formatting and the publishing. But uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's been right. a huge learning curve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, definitely. You know what? I don't regret it for a second because I'm having a blast doing it. Talk about old school. Oh right. my goodness. I so it's it's funny that you say that about him because uh in order for me to do any of my outlines for my books, I have to write it down. Yeah. Like I, you know, typing is cool, but I have to write it down first to get a feel for it. Every time I write something down, it's like etched in my brain. You know, if I type it up, it's like it's there, but it's not really it's, it doesn't feel genuine to me. Because I come from that era. Yeah. That's, I come from that too. When I first joined a writing group it was 2007 and our whole thing was set up on the basis of Natalie Goldberg's teaching. And one of her favorite sayings is that you write from your head, through your heart and out your hand. And that's how I've always written. I've always been one that my first draft is always by hand. Some of it I might fill in on the computer, but most of it is by hand. Um, same with all of my dash stories. I sit down, I write them out by hand first and then put them in. I see that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you, you know, I'm right there with you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're speaking to Diane Bater. She's on Wild Podcast for the second time. Uh, we're here to talk about her book, All That Sparkles. Um, Diane, tell them whatever else you have coming up. Oh, what don't I have coming up? <laughs> I'm off to work. Uh, um, I Right now, I am working on edits for what was the first book in my Gilda, uh, Gilda Wright mystery series. It was called um, Dead Without Honor. I am retitling it and changing the cover. So it will be called um, Death of a... Oh, hang on. Death of a Jaded Samurai. Okay. And that I mean, was the original title when it was very first published. It's been through three to four different covers. So this will be the fourth cover. Okay. So, okay. yeah. Well, I thank you so much for stopping by. I uh, wish you nothing but the best. And always feel free to come back and talk about any book that you want. Absolutely. Thank you, Darshan. You You're have welcome. a wonderful day. You too.